Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode. Today I would love to talk about a little bit of Zen meditation and about a book that I read recently that I would love to recommend and also some other aspects um, about Zen and musicianship and stuff like that. Um, so I had a lot of time to reflect because I was sick, I had COVID recently and uh, I was sick for a couple of days and I wasn't able to do anything. So I could not play, <laughs> I could not um, practice music in any way or form because I was so tired and exhausted. But I'm very, very thankful that everything went so well, that I'm healthy again and I have really no uh, repercussions anymore of the disease. But of course it's not fun, so pay attention. It's something that needs to be taken very seriously. But Enough talking about that. Um, of course, I had a lot of time to think. And so the only thing I was able to do was actually to read. And I bought this book here, which is from Philippe Caplot, The Three Pillars of Zen. So what is this book about? I've read some Zen books because I wanted to get a little deeper understanding of the practice. And I'm practicing now since two years a little bit of Zazen, I mean the sitting meditation. Um, I have to say, so I've read also this book, for example, of Alan Watts, The Way of Zen, which is very famous. And as I mentioned in another video, I've read also this book about the Hara of Graf Diokheim. And the thing is the following one, with these two books, they touch more maybe the philosophical aspect of Zen and uh, historical aspect. Um, they have more a metaphysical approach. And it's very interesting. But I think that it lacks practice, okay? Some people just want to practice this stuff. Maybe they're not so interested in this whole, um, uh, I mean, philosophical aspect of it. And what I like about this book of, of Kaplow, so first of all, he was a journalist. And he said, well, uh, I want to make a very good documentation about what is happening in the monasteries. Um, he documented, for example, also um, docusans, which are the personal interviews between the teacher and the students. Then there are also texts written by, by teachers, for example, Yasutano Roshi or Harada Roshi, which are very famous. And, and they give from the get-go, so, okay, what is Zen? What different kinds of Zen are there? What different forms of practice? <coughs> Sorry what um how can i practice this so he says okay first lesson sitting down uh, focusing on your breath counting the inhales counting the exhales trying to um, get a little bit in control of the monkey mind okay that is jumping from one foot to another focusing on the breath then it says okay later when you when this works well then you focus just on the exhale later he explains also okay how does Shikantaza work? And Shikantaza is the sitting meditation in its purest form after Eihei Dogen, Zen Master Dogen, um, from, the Soto, uh, from the Soto sect. He was the main founder and a very important historical person. And Shikantaza is just, in that case, just sitting. It's an objectless meditation and it's very, uh, um, I think, one of the most important disciplines. Um, it's very tough actually, <laughs> so you can try it, uh, but it's very, very tough. It's not as easy as it seems. And then there are also commentaries, for example, about koans. And if you're familiar with them, koans are these paradoxical riddles and statements that are used as an object of contemplation. For example, what is the sound of one hand clapping? That is a very famous one. Um, and there are also like... There is also documentation about, for example, that the Zen master worked with a student with a certain koan and he looks, how are they progressing? I mean, the main function of a koan is to break your mind because it's something that you're not able to understand <laughs> and this should evoke a certain experience because it crumbles your mind, right? That's the idea. And... Um, what I like about this book, so there is not only this stuff, there are, for example, also um, 
reports, uh, documentations about enlightenment. Um, so enlightenment experiences, how do they look like? So there are some people, you have maybe, for example, the story of a Japanese entrepreneur. Uh, what did he experience? Um, then you have stories about, okay, some Kensho experiences. Kensho is like the little glimpse of your true self and Satri experiences like the full uh, awakening and the full enlightenment, which can be also shallow, of course, but it can also, of course, uh, get deeper the more you practice. Then there are like historical texts. Uh, there is excerpt also of the Shobogenzo from Master Dogen. So it's a very, 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 very uh, good book. It, it offers a lot. It offers also a little bit the anthropological, social perspective. Um, what is the life in monasteries looking like? What is happening during the retreats, during the sessions, uh, especially during Rohatsu, <laughs> which is uh, the most infamous session, right? Uh, during Christmas, where um, it's like a really hardcore session, sitting hours and hours and hours and hours. And, and I mean, Zen monks are really known to be the Navy Seals of meditation. These dudes don't mess around. And of course, you know, as a Westerner, the problem is when you approach Zen for the first time, and this happened to me too, that um, it confuses you a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, especially, I mean, if you read Alan Watts, right? way of Zen, uh, he gives you like this um, immediately statements like historical, historical statements of masters like if you meet the Buddha, kill him. Or you get the story of Zen master Hakuin spitting on a Buddha statue. And this for us is unconceivable. I mean, imagine uh, if, if somebody would do that in the church on a cross and, and, and Jesus, you know, I mean, <laughs> that would be the greatest act of heresy. But of course, to understand this, you need to uh, understand a little bit the metaphysics behind it. But what also Kaplow says in his book, um, there is also this emphasis of how reading too much about Zen, how reading too much about philosophy can be actually a hindrance to the practice because uh, it creates expectations and um, expectations, attachments to certain outcomes, and that can hinder actually from letting go, from surrendering during the meditation practice. So on one hand, <laughs> so I'm here very um, conflicting now with what I'm saying, I know. So on one hand, I recommend reading a little bit to get some further understanding, to get wrong judgments uh, out of the way about uh, the practice. Um, on one hand, I would advise you maybe not to read too much about it, also about Satri experiences, because in the end it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. What matters is, it's just, in my opinion, to, of course, get rid of, of ideological structures, of everything that is hindering us to surrender to life, to accept things as they are, to see the world as it is, and to see ourselves as we are in our true form and to get rid of this um, of these wrong reflections of these distorted reflections of reality and Zen is in that sense very scientific actually even if it rejects the intellect um, because the intellect is seen as a sense so in Buddhism there are not five senses but there are six and the intellect is one of them and that means that the intellect as well is something that can be an illusion so yeah so it's important I think not to think too much about it and not to read too much about it but if you read something I really recommend this book I think it is very 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 well made and well in another video then I would also like to talk about um, but we will do this in another video otherwise it gets too long but then I would also to talk, love to talk about um, how, how I actually affected my um, life as a musician, what ideas it gave me also for a, from a pedagogical perspective, from a, as, as, for, as an educator, for example. Um, I think that practicing a certain mindfulness is something that is actually, actually very helpful 
and especially to deal with situations like this where we are in a constant on and off situation with the whole lockdown and not lockdown and uh, maybe being sick and not being sick and this constant fear about things changing and how to deal with this constant turmoil on changing of things, right? But uh, with that being said, <laughs> there's nothing else to say, I guess. Um, I hope that this book could be interesting for you and I will put the link in the description below so you can find it. Um, and I wish you, I wish you the best, stay healthy, pay attention, and I wish you good luck to get through these tough times. Okay, all right, see ya.